Hi, Joe Clark with Inventus Aerotherm. Today I'm going to be talking about the Nanodec Recorder Controller. Uh, we've had a new firmware come out last week, version 5.10, and it's added a couple new features, but the one that I really want to focus on is the new Nanodec web server. It's a standard free feature with all Nanodecs with version 5.0 and above. Uh, don't worry though, if you have an older Nanodec, you can just simply update the firmware and you'll have this feature. Now what a web server is, is uh, basically gives you the ability to view data remotely using a web browser. You'll notice on the bottom left hand side here, I've got three different icons uh, which probably look familiar to you. You have your Internet Explorer, your Google Chrome, and your Mozilla Firefox. All are capable and compatible with a web server. Let me go ahead and start with Internet Explorer 9. I've got it open here. If I click on my favorites and go to the Nanodec web server, you notice it's trying to connect to an IP address. All you need to do is connect to an IP address of the NanoDAC, whether it's something internal like a 192 address, or for this example, I'm actually connecting to an outside IP address about 30 miles away. Now, by default, there is no security enabled on this, but I have decided to turn it on. I set my username and password to admin and admin. Once I connect, I am now looking at the home screen. So there's a couple things we can talk about here, and I'm just going to go through this quickly. Uh, starting at the very top, we've got a home, about, and contact links. The home link is what you're looking at right now. When I click on the about link, it gives you information pertaining to the NanoDeck you're connected to, such as the descriptor, MAC address, software version, and boot ROM version. When you click on the contact link, you'll notice you have four icons going across the middle, such as accredited services, customer first and technical support, installation and commissioning, repair and support services. These are simply all links to our website that provide you additional information, so if there is a point where you need to look up information for tech support or for uh, repair, simply click on the link and it will provide you with the information you need. Now on the left hand side here, what we, you, we basically have three different sections we're looking at. We've got uh, current trending uh, data on the NanoDeck underneath the trending. You've got more of the messages and uh, a general overview underneath the summary. And then we can also look at historical data uh, that is currently uh, all in the NanoDAC as we speak. When we click on the bar graph, uh, you'll notice that we're looking at four different points of I.O. here. Uh, front, middle, rear, uh, temp zones, and then also a pressure. Take a look at the very bottom left-hand corner. We've got a couple of icons here. We've got a green round icon indicating that the recording is currently enabled. Because the NanoDeck is a recorder and a controller, as a recorder it's going to be recording at all times. There are times when it may not record, such as if you're making a configuration change or if you're specifically telling the NanoDeck not to record. So keep in mind when you're logged in, if you see a red icon there, that indicates that the uh, recording is not currently taking place on the NanoDeck uh, due to one of those two reasons. The next icon indicates that there is some type of global alarm. This is more of a system related alarm. Uh, chances are uh, with this particular alarm, uh, it's likely due that the date or the time are set incorrectly. The next icon indicates you have a message. You'll get this every time that you turn on the nano deck indicating that it's powered up. Some other things that might cause the message is a specific user locking in or an alarm on a particular channel. So right now we're looking at four points of I.O. as I talked about previously, and it's updating at roughly one uh, second intervals. You notice on the right hand side here we've got an options button. We click on the options button, we've got a couple different things we can trigger back and forth to change the way that the screen looks. For example, if we go to a flat view, we hit save and go to back, it changes the way that the, the, the uh, four uh, points look. If we go back into options, and let's say that we don't want to look at any decimal places, instead of what we heard as default as two, now we're looking at no decimal places. Kind of gives you an idea of some of the things that you can do. Some other things that you can turn on or turn off are things like the legend. You can choose between a transparent or a white background. Do we want to show grid lines? The value alignment, do we want to have that horizontal or vertical? And then what's a nice feature as well is what point do we specifically want to look at? The default is to show all points that you currently have enabled. But if you want to look at a specific zone, you can simply click on that zone, hit save, and go back and look at that specific zone. Okay, let's take a look at line graphs. So again, you can see our four different points, and they are currently being trended. 
Right now, the values that I have going across are simply uh, sine wave and triangle test signals, as you can see by the trend here. It looks like right now it's set to, to trend every five seconds, uh, but if we want to increase that interval, we can always click on options and change the sample period from five seconds to one second. We hit save, go back, and now you'll, look, now you'll notice that we're looking at more up-to-date data. Of course, keep in mind that when you increase the interval, you're also going to shorten the duration of what you can see on the screen at one point in time. For example, we change this back to 10 seconds. And you can notice that we're looking at significantly more data at one particular point. Everything else is pretty much the same. Uh, you can change the plot thickness. So for example, if you want to change the um, how uh, thick that particular line is, you can go from narrow to wide and it'll change the thickness of the line. Everything else we pretty much talked about, legend, background type, do we want to show grid lines and how many points that we want to plot. Now when we click on numerics, uh, this simply self-explanatory just shows you the uh, points that you currently have trending right now. Again, you can have up to six points right now when you have four. The colors that you see in front of you right now are based on the configuration of the NanoDAC. You have a lot of different colors you can choose from. These are just what they were currently set to. Again, if we click on options, the only di uh, differences you can do with the options this time around is how big you want the font to be, and then of course the size of the PV. So for example, if we switch the channel font size to large, we'll leave the PV font size to normal. We hit save, go back. You can see how it changes the way the display looks. So that's trending. Um, pretty basic, but it gives you a lot of information. And again, these are all built into the NanoDeck at no additional charge. Let's click on alarm summary. Currently, we don't have any alarm. Um, you may have noticed earlier in the video there was a little uh, alarm icon in the lower left-hand corner. If I had set it to latched, meaning I would have to acknowledge it in order for that alarm to clear, you would see it going across here. Message summary. This re uh, refers to that little message icon I, I sh uh, showed you earlier. Um, pretty much all we have listed here are the uh, channel one alarm turning on and turning off. And then one nice feature that we have with the pr uh, promote parameter page is that in the event that you want to display something that you don't necessarily want to trend, maybe you're looking at an average value of something, um, whatever it may be. With the Promote Parameter page on the NanoDeck, you can have up to 10 read-writable values displayed. What this page allows you to do is look at those 10 values. Now, they're not readable, I'm sorry, they're not writable from the web server, but they do give you viewing capability. So again, we talked about the six point limitation previously. Well, you can have that six points plus the additional 10 points now on the Promote Parameter page. So you can actually look at 16 different points. Now let's look at the historical data. So what's nice about this is no longer do you have to extract the data um, and look at it, um, you know, remotely, uh, you know, pulling it into another piece of software or being right in front of the NanoDeck. You can just load up the web server and look at the internal memory as we speak. So right now uh, looks very similar to what we saw underneath the line graph or trending, but it's obviously not updating. Let's click on options real quick. Again, this looks very familiar to before. If we change the sample period, say to every 10 seconds, hit save, go back. Again, now we're looking at data. If we want to look at data, uh, let's just say maybe you know 30 minutes ago. Simply click the previous data button, and you can see every time we go back, you can see the data that we have saved internally on the NanoDAC. And again, this is all based on the internal memory of the NanoDeck um, with four points of data being recorded. Uh, let's just say every uh, five seconds, for example, you probably can store two to three months worth of data internally without any kind of archiving strategy implemented. So that being said, uh, that is the web server in a nutshell. Um, that's on IE9. If we wanted to do the exact same with Google Chrome, we can go to our bookmarks, very similar page, admin, admin, and again, same kind of functionality. Now, one thing I want to keep in mind here, 
Um, I'm still logged in using Internet Explorer 9. So right now I theoretically have two different users logged in at once. Let's test out Firefox. Admin, admin. And now, using Internet Explorer 9, the latest Google Chrome, and Firefox, I now have three different users logged into the Nano Deck. With this web server, you can have up to four separate users connected to it, which really is a nice feature considering it's now a standard feature with the Nano Deck. That being said, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you guys have any questions, uh, my information is up on the screen. Feel free to shoot me a quick email or give me a call. Thanks a lot.